Oliver learns to pick pockets. Set in the early 1800s, this is the story of a boy named Oliver who runs away from the orphanage where he is treated very cruelly. He arrives in London and gets caught in the big bad world of crime. This part of the story tells us how he meets Fagine's criminal gang and it taught how to pick pockets. So let us start with the story. Oliver continued walking along the main road till he was tired. At night, he slept by the wayside. One morning, he met a young boy who introduced himself as John Dawkins, also known as the Artful Dodger. Dawkins was a stocky boy who wore clothes, clothes too big for him. Except for his size, he looked and behaved like a grown-up. He offered to accompany Oliver and introduce him to a gentleman in London who would give him free board and lodging. Late that night, they reached the gentleman's house. I have brought a new friend for you, Fajain. Dawkins introduced Oliver. Fajain was an old man with a long pointed beard and red hair. There was four or five other boys sitting in a corner, all about Dawkins' age. On a clothesline, a large number of silk handkerchiefs were hanging. I am glad to meet you, said Fajain. The other boys came and shook Oliver's hand. After breakfast the next morning, Fajain asked the boys what they had brought. Four silk handkerchiefs, said Bates, one of the boys. Very good. Would you like to be able to get such beautiful things, Oliver? Asked Fajain. Yes, sir, if you teach me. Fajain and his boys began to play a game. Fajain dressed himself up like a rich man and put a wallet, a watch and other valuables in his pocket of the coats. He began to walk about the room, stopping now and then as if he was looking at a shop window. The boys walked behind him, carefully not to be seen. At a suitable moment, the artful dodger stood on Fajain's foot. Another boy stumbled on him from behind and the other boys in a moment removed all the valuables from Fajain's pockets. The boys all moved away before the man could turn around. Bates and Dawkins will be great men, Oliver said Vajain. Try to learn from them and you too will become famous. He put a handkerchief in his pocket. See if you can take it out without any feeling anything, he said to Oliver. Oliver nimbly drew out the cloth with two fingers. Excellent, said Fajain. Give him a shilling. I am proud of you. Oliver was bewildered. He could not understand how taking a handkerchief from Fajain's pocket would make him great. For several days, this game was played and then finally one day, Oliver was sent out to face the world with the artful dodger and baits. Oliver walked between them, wondering where they were going and what he would be taught first. The dodger stopped suddenly and drew his companions back with the greatest caution. What's the matter? asked Oliver. Hush, replied the dodger. Do you see that old gentleman at the bookshop, bookstall? Yes, I see him, said Oliver. He will do said Bates. Oliver looked from one to the other with the greatest surprise. The two boys walked stealthily across the road and stood close behind the old gentleman. Oliver walked a few paces behind them and stood looking on in silent amazement. The old gentleman looked very respectable. As he stood reading a book with the greatest interest and eagerness, it was clear that he was not paying any attention to the bookstall, the street or the boys. Oliver was alarmed to see the dodger put his hand into the old gentleman's pocket and pull out a silk handkerchief. He handed it to 
beds and both of them immediately started running away. In an instant, the whole mystery of the handkerchiefs and Fajain was clear to Gulliver. He stood still for a moment, struck with terror and feeling as if he was burning in a fire. Then confused and frightened, and he started running away too. At that moment, the old gentleman put his hand in his pocket and realized that his handkerchief was missing. He turned around sharply and saw Oliver running away. He concluded that Oliver must be the thief, so he shouted, Stop thief! and started chasing him down the street. An extract from Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. Bye. <laughs>